Miss Duncan? Rest period. The doctor will see you in a moment. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Duncan. Please sit down. I hope your trip wasn't too difficult. On the contrary, it was delightful. I've never been this high before. Do you feel any effects? No, should I? Confidentially, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'll wait. I'm a lungs photogenic. Well, this is a month old take. You better make some new ones. Might as well get it over with now. Certainly. I'll examine Miss Duncan right away. Would you go to the nurse, please? Breathe deeply. Again, please. More deeply. Oh. I feel dizzy. That's the altitude. See, I wasn't disappointed after all. I would just take your x-ray. Right here, Miss Duncan. When did you first notice that you were ill? I really don't remember. It just kept getting worse. Professor Lenniger sent me a very nice letter. Warned me to take the best care of you. That was very kind. That was very kind of Professor Lenniger. Show it forward. Open it up. Take a deep breath. Again. Hold it. That's all. May I dress? You may. When will I know the results? Tomorrow. How long will I be here, Doctor? You've been doing concert tours for the past two years. A night here, a night there, eating on the run, rushing to catch trains. Barely time to sleep. Barely time for anything. You should be very tired. Yes. Yes, I am. Are you finished with me, Doctor? For the time being. You know, I'm really quite overwhelmed to meet you. I got a large number of your records, also a very vivid memory the last time I heard you broadcast. The plate is all right, Doctor. Good. Now, I won't put you under orders on your first day here, but I do recommend that you lie down for a while. Your suite is number... 17. I'm helpless for that. 17 it is. We shall have to build you up a little. How's the appetite? We'll soon change that. By the way, I think on your first night here, you ought to dine with your doctor. Shall we meet in the lobby at 7? Thank you. Notify the kitchen, grade A stimulation diet number 17. Yes, doctor. Miss Duncan, I'm Huberta, your nurse. How do you do? You shouldn't be doing that. Oh, I don't mind a bit. I do. Come, lie down. Well, really, it's no trouble. You've got to rest. Open your mouth. I'll finish unpacking. This is the only way I get to travel. Paris. London. New York. My, you've been around a lot. But you should have warmer clothes than these. They should have told you. You see, 99.8. That big mountain. That's the Mont Vierge. The Mont Vierge. Virgin Mountain. There's such a lovely little town at the foot of it, like a toy town. It's not little when you've lived in it, and I've lived there all my life. Who had this suite before me? A lady. She left us yesterday. Did she go home? I guess so. I didn't ask. There. All done. I'll get a boy to take your luggage down while you're at dinner. Oh, I forgot. I'm having dinner with Dr. Stanton.
evening, Dr. It was sweet of you to send me these. What? Oh, the orchids. You know, I hate to admit it, but someone isn't as slow as I am. I, I didn't send them. You didn't? To my shame, no. <laughs> who could it have been? Anybody who saw you. I don't understand it. I look around. Every man in the room's got his eye on you. Dr. Stanton, I'm sorry. Telephone, please. Thank you. Will you excuse me? Certainly. I'll wait for you in the lobby. Still intrigued? Still intrigued. No clues to who sent them? No, no clues. I watched all through dinner. I didn't see anyone who looked like the white orchid type. I'll be back in a minute. Not be under, they should be over so I can put my hands on them. Good evening, madame. This corsage was delivered to me without a card. Can you tell me who sent it? No card? No card. If madame would tell me your room number? 17. 17? We have a standing order to send white orchids every night to the lady in 17. It's in the book. It was in the book. It isn't in the book anymore. Why don't you read the book every day? The lady left us last night, yes. She left last night. Oh, I see. Then I'll return the flowers to the gentleman who sent them. <laughs> it is quite impossible, very much impossible, you see. He left months ago. Yes, months ago. Six months ago. What does the number matter? I think you'd better stop sending them. Very well, madam. Didn't you like your admirer? I found out who sent them. Who? A man who died months ago to a woman who died yesterday. What? Who died yesterday in my room. Now they're both gone. All that's left of them is a standing order for white orchids. Now you mustn't jump to conclusions. The woman, she was Portuguese and very charming, left to join the gentleman. They were both cured. Do you always lie so considerately? I'm not lying. No, of course not. You call it therapy. Protect the patients from fear. Keep away all bad associations. But I'm not fooled, Doctor. I know death is a guest here. He sent me his compliments tonight. No, he didn't. But somebody else did. That was Professor Lineker on the phone. Professor Lineker? He wanted to make sure that you'd arrived all right. You see a lot of people interested in you and your future. They want you to get well again. He said that you were to relax, stay quiet, take orders, and do what people think is best for you. The best thing for you now is bed. I couldn't sleep. You can. I'll have Hubert to give you something. Am I already under orders? As of now. As you wish, Doctor. Dr. Stanton, please. Is the doctor expecting your call? Yes, yes, he said I could. Hello? Doctor, this is Karen Duncan. Can you come up to my room quickly, please? By the way.
the matter? Did you have a bad dream? I don't know. I can't seem to get enough air. The mountains are pressing against me. You're not acclimated yet. See, people react oddly to sudden changes in altitude, but you mustn't worry. No, I suppose not. But I heard such strange noises. Someone knocking on the balcony, and then there was... There it goes. Is that what you heard? Yes. Here's your mysterious knocker. No, there was another noise, too. It sounded like an iron door. You must have been dreaming. I was awake. Hearing it was what made me call you. There are stages in sleep when one is neither sleeping nor waking. I had the same thing happen to me at times. I'll keep this for the Christmas tree. Shall I still be here at Christmas? I don't worry about time. And don't worry about noise. There's nothing mysterious here, nothing to harm you. Just relax. Go back to sleep. I'll try. You must concentrate. Try uh, counting sheep or composers. I once tried counting composers starting with the A's. Did it work? I had a nightmare. Well, pretend you're on a merry-go-round. It works with me. What if I catch the brass ring? Give it to me in the morning. Good night. Good night. Wonderful. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. Did you finally get to sleep? Yes, thank you. Good. Then where's my brass ring? Oh, I missed it. I didn't lean over far enough. You won't be needing that for a while. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, yes. But yesterday I... Yesterday you were smoking today or not. Remember, you're under orders. Did Huberta tell you about your schedule? Yes. No talking after the first gong. Rest period, Miss Duncan. Didn't you eat your breakfast? I lost my appetite. Well, it's always hard the first two or three days. A week you wouldn't change it for anything. Do you want a book? I see you brought some. No. I'll just sit here and think. Think about what? About what's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen, except that you'll get well. How do you know? You'll get well. That is, if you do as the doctor says. Some of these people just make trouble for themselves. There. Now, you're all set for the morning. I'll be back later. Don't pay any attention to her. We don't take ourselves too seriously here. Not seriously at all. I'm Celestine Miller. I know who you are. I watched you at dinner last night. Yes, I know. I heard you last night, too. Heard me? When Tony came in. Tony? Oh, oh, you mean Dr. Stanton? Yes, Dr. Stanton. Don't you call him Tony yet? No, not yet. You're really quite ill, aren't you? So they say. I'm not. I'm just playing sick. My husband thinks he's in love with another woman, and my being here makes him feel guilty. Would you like a cigarette? No, thank you. Tony has indoctrinated you, hasn't he? Yes, I suppose so. What do you think of him? Oh, I think he's charming. First day, he's always charming. Mrs. Miller. I'll see you after the gong. Oh, this is charming. It's mine. I'd like to see it. Yes. Oh, this is pleasant. Well, it's quiet. It's like a cool hand on your forehead. It's so removed, and yet just a few steps from the... When you want to get away from that, come over here. The door's always open. Oh, careful. I might take you up on that. Your piano looks very inviting. You didn't tell me you played. <laughs> I wouldn't dare in front of you. <laughs> looks as though you haven't played for a long time. No, I haven't. 
if you're in the mood for confession, when I was about seven, I did toy with the idea of becoming a pianist myself. What made you change your mind? When I was eight, I met a small girl who had a doll that was always being sick. Oh. No, no, this is true. And I used to play the part of the doctor. You see, and as she was a singularly beautiful little girl, and I decided that a doctor's life must be a singularly happy one. So here I am. Well, what happened to the little girl? Well, I think she married a pianist. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, don't tell me. This is forbidden, too. For the time being. But why? It's asked too much of you already. You need a good rest. But I must play. Playing the piano is my life. It was your life. It will be again. But for the moment, you must try and think of yourself as being in a deep sleep between today and tomorrow. And before you know it, the darkness will have gone just the way it went last night. Is there anything that isn't forbidden around here? No, oh, lots of things. Among them, hope. Hope? Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. While I was lying down this morning, I realized there was no use in my trying to fight you. I didn't know you were. Oh, it was only fear. I didn't realize how frightened I was until last night, and then when you came to see me, I... Well, I'm not frightened anymore. There's a nice quality about you, Doctor. You make me forget my sickness. No, don't use that word. All you have is a tiny puncture. <laughs> like a tire? Like a tire. How many miles left in me? Oh, lots and lots if you don't speed. Well, I'll try now, too. When may I go to the village? Speeding already? No, I just... I'm afraid there'll be some delays. He's starting tomorrow. You'll have to spend a whole month in bed. If you need anything for the village, we'll send it up for you. A whole month in bed? That'll be a month well spent if you're a good girl. Is it necessary to refer to me as a child? Well, up here, in a way, you are a child. You have no responsibilities. You make no decisions. And who will make my decisions? I will. And the first day you're up, I'll take you into town myself. Sure he is. Have you fallen in love with him yet? Oh, Celestine, you're crazy. Don't deny it. It's case history. Every woman here goes through it during the time she's confined in bed. Later, they learn to hate him. Hate him? Oh, in an affectionate sort of way, of course. They find out his concern is purely professional, part of the treatment. You know, keep the patient happy, that sort of thing. Very sound principle, isn't it? Well, I'll grant him one thing. He is fair. Divides his charm equally. Ten drops with every meal. <laughs> He isn't always so methodical. Excuse me, darling, I've got lots of packages to open. They all look alike to me. They're not, though. The only thing they have in common is that they are all you. A piece of you, anyway. Not a very flattering one. How am I getting along? I'll tell you tomorrow. Well, you say that every time you examine me. Don't you ever think about today? Of course, all the time. Well, what do you think of me today? I think you're a lovely and talented young woman who still has some distance to go. Well, that's a concession. What? That you think I'm a lovely, talented woman. I think you're a lovely young woman who's taking up more of my time than she should. Don't you realize I have a lot of other patients out there? Certainly. Doesn't the fact impress you? Not a bit. Fortunately, impresses me. How'd you go? Oh, Tony, don't throw me out. I feel so good, so... so at one with everything. You can feel so at one with everything somewhere else. Doesn't the fact impress you? Of course. It's the gift of the mountains. High metabolism. No. I prefer a musical term, harmony. Strange how the days here melt together. Like a perfect chord. That's the charm of living without a calendar and living quietly. You can't say I'm not living quietly. See that you stay that way. Yes, Doctor.
I was looking for some matches and found your collection. None of those work. Now try this one. I have a present for you. What is it? Oh, it's a pillbox. I found it in the village. It's quite old, I think. Careful, it's full. You know when to take them, don't you? Yes, you bird has told me. Thank you, Tony. Oh. I've forgotten how warm flowers could make a house. I thought it was about time something was in that box. You know, you're going to spoil me. What am I going to do when you leave? <laughs> I can't seem to get that little girl out of my mind. Which little girl? The little girl who married the pianist. Oh, that one. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I, uh, I didn't bring the flowers to you. You didn't? No, I brought them to the piano. I don't suppose you'd let me play it, would you? I don't suppose I would. No, I was afraid of that. All right, then you play it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, this is going to be horrible. <laughs> You're standing over me. I'm sorry. I played that when I was 16. I can see myself, my hair and braids. Oh, I was very serious and very determined. That's where my music teacher tried to kiss me. Any other memories like that? Yes, a few. There have been a lot of men in my life. Bach, Brahms, Beethoven. They were very possessive. They demanded all of me. Did you give them all? Well, I thought so then, but I... I don't think so now. Paging Miss Duncan, I'm afraid. Yes, Doctor. Come on, I'll walk over with you. Clumsy, aren't I? Are you all right? Now I am. It was my fault entirely. I didn't realize I was coming into the intersection. Neither did I. Mr. Claremont! How does it look, Pete? Not so good. You don't know how sorry I am. Oh, it's nothing that can't be fixed. Are you all right? Well, I guess so. I was terribly frightened. So was I. I'll go into town and have them sent out a tow car. That is, if I can get a ride. Yes, of course you can. Do you want me to stay here, Mr. Claremont? See, si, the money quick. By the way, my name is Claremont. Paul Claremont. Cigarette? No, thank you. Not just now. The air has a bite up here. Yes, there's a new snow on the mountains. I should have brought my skis. Where did you come from? Monte Carlo. I came up for the race. The race? Next Sunday, haven't you heard? No, I haven't. How are things in Monte Carlo? Where they always are. The wheels spin, Corn Boker retires young, and Mr. Claymont always loses. Why don't you come down and bring me some luck? I can have you there in 95 minutes. With a broken neck? No, thank you. I like it too much up here. So do I. I've never run into such interesting danger before. Well, the menace is practically over. I'll have you in the village in a few minutes. You shouldn't drive so fast. Are you warning me not to speed? I am. I want this to last as long as possible. After all, speed isn't necessarily movement. It can be a kind of philosophy, too. Pattern for living. Mm. Pattern for winning races. Do you want me to drop you at the garage? 
whither thou goest, and so shall I. That would be hard for both of us. is around the corner. Goodbye, Mr. Claremont. Well, you can't go away. I haven't had time to thank you for such a pleasant accident. I can do better over the dinner table. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have an engagement. Lunch tomorrow? Engagement. Dinner? Engagement. Sounds terribly monotonous. <laughs> it isn't. Well, this can't go on forever. You're going to the race, of course. No. I'll get a box for you at the race, and we'll have cocktails, and then dinner. I'm sorry, I'm not going to the race. I don't blame you, but I'll meet you just the same. We'll start at six, and then perhaps I can convince you that snow is for the cold in heart. The warm heart are lit by the sea. I prefer the snow. Then I'll let you convince me. <laughs> the garage is around the corner. Goodbye. Don't forget, six o'clock. Karen. Oh, hello, Celestine. Who was that? I like his proportion. <laughs> quite a measuring eye. I measure men quite accurately from a distance. I only start making mistakes when they get close. Who was he? Oh, he almost ran into me at the intersection and cracked up his car. What were you talking about out there? Oh, he wanted me to have dinner with him. Are you? No, of course not. Oh, I would. Well, then you go in my place. It might be very instructive. He also teaches philosophy. <laughs> Where are you going now? I want to leave this film to be developed and get some records. You want to come with me? Oh, no, darling. I've got something much more important to do here. I'll meet you later, though. All right. Meet me here in a half hour. Fine. are quiet. Am I? I hadn't noticed. Are you running away from that man? Well, if you want to call it there. Karen, don't be silly. Or if you must run away from him, at least do it slowly. Give him a chance to catch up with you. You Philistine, have you been drinking? Mm -hmm. oh, you shouldn't have Tony ever told Tony has Daddy. nothing to do with it anymore. What do you mean? I wanted to tell you back at the hotel, but I was much too fascinated by your passenger. I'm leaving in a few days. Karen, I'm well. Tony said this morning I could go. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm so happy for myself. How soon? Monday morning. Will your husband come to meet you? No. No, I'll surprise him. Did you do that? Well, I, I'm afraid so. Let's stop and see. No. No, we've got to get back. Remember, six o'clock. I'll tell you a secret. In 30 years, Frau Lineker has never learned how to make good coffee. That's one reason I would like to come up here more often. Another and less important one is to see you. Come in. Professor Lineker, your car is here. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. When I sent Karen to you, I had one regret. The world was losing a great artist, and we have far too few that we can afford to be reckless with them. But now, this is hard, Tony. I wish I could be more of a help to you. But all I can say, you already found out for yourself. She has a chance, slim, but a chance. We'll take everything we've learned, plus something. But I don't need to tell you that. You know. Yes, I know. How is she bearing up? She's been wonderful. Does she know how ill she is? No, she doesn't. Professor Lineker. What a wonderful surprise. What a delight to see you. Careful, Karen. I'm not that old. How are you, dear? How's your rheumatism? Still faithful to me. And your liver? We're not on speaking terms. 
Have you cut out those big black cigars? Young lady, I am the doctor, and I ask the questions. However, thank you for the idea. <laughs> no, I have not cut them out. <laughs> Isn't he a darling? How long are you staying? I'm leaving right now. Oh, and I thought you'd come up here to take care of me. Let Tony take care of you. Tony's a jailer. Good. He doesn't know what the word leniency means. And I feel so strong now, so ready for anything. You do what Tony tells you. He knows how strong you are. Well, I must be off. I have a long ride before dark. Goodbye, Tony. Goodbye. Goodbye, Karen. Bye. What a sweet man. Why didn't you tell me he was coming? I didn't know myself. Oh, I've had a glorious afternoon. So I see. Come into my office, will you? This afternoon? Oh, nothing spectacular. And yet, in a way, something miraculous. I was doing some shopping in the village, just a few little things, when suddenly I had the feeling that everything bad was over. I could pick up the threads of my life again. I could start to weave them into something. I, I was no longer different, no longer sick. I was as I had been. <laughs> a man tried to pick me up today. A very attractive man. I can hardly blame him for that. Oh, it was so good for my morale. To have a man show an interest in one, it was... It was so normal. <laughs> After the full impact had struck me, I... I knew I was well again. You will be, but you must go slowly. I'm beginning to hate that word. The most hateful word in the world. I'm going to have to ask you not to go to the village for a while. Why not? Because I think it's best. That's not the reason. I don't be too much of a woman. You know it's not. Let's not argue about it. How can you always be so professional? Why must you deny any joy that I have? I go to the village, someone talks to me, I come back here singing inside, and you put on a long face and say, stay here and take my pulse and act like a pompous... Oh, leave my hand alone. Too much excitement for one day. I drink this. Yes, it did. Karen, darling, aren't you coming to the races? No. Darling, why not? Oh, doctor's orders. Tony said so? Mm -hmm. Because of what happened the other day? Your guess is as good as mine. It's probably better. Darling, you wouldn't know if you did go. Possibly not, but I'm staying here just the same. Well, if you want to be difficult. Um, have you any message for, uh, what's his name? I'd love to give it to him. No, nothing. Run along and have a good time. Well, I'll see if I can bring you back his gold cup. <laughs> Today, I feel as though I could do anything. Bye. Goodbye. Miss Duncan, it's time to take your pill. Oh.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon, miss. Is Dr. Stanton in? No, Dr. Stanton isn't here today. I just finished cleaning. He went down to the village and he won't be back until tonight. Oh. Anything I can do for you, miss? No, thank you. Goodbye. I didn't see the race. I just got here. He lost. You know, it's your fault he lost. What do you mean? His car broke down less than a mile from the finish line. His car, Karen. Was he hurt? Oh, no, there was no accident. He just had to fall out of the race, that's all. Well, that's better. Come on, let's go in here. You know, Karen, I like you. And I've got something for you. I'm going to make you my heir. Do you feel all right? I feel wonderful. I'm delirious. Wouldn't you be if you were going home? Yes, I guess you're right. I know how you feel. This is for you. Comes in very handy. What is it for? It's a pass key to the sanitarium. I got it from the night watchman. It costs a lot, but it was worth it. Anytime you come in after hours, you just use the servant's entry. Well, that's sweet of you, but I don't think I'll be out after hours. Keep it. And promise me, no matter how late you come in, you'll knock on my door. I'm going back in a little while. I've got the pack. Three big trunks. Besides, I want to know how everything came up. You better hurry. Goodbye, darling. Have yourself a time. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I've just about given you up. I understand you're losing the race was my fault. You saw it then? No, I didn't see it. You're leaving? I was leaving. Pete, phone Monte Carlo, will you? I won't keep that date tonight. Sure thing. These are not mine, you know. The management leaves them there for people to trip over. Aren't you being a bit previous, breaking an engagement? Well, he'll be there tomorrow, too. He? Yes, the croupier. <laughs> you mean you're giving him up for me? That's the ultimate sacrifice. See how serious it is? I'm even neglecting my vices. Besides, the croupier has become routine. I like to keep away from routine. Would you like dinner? What about the management's luggage? That's the management's problem.
George, you see Miss Duncan? No, sir. Not since this afternoon. Thank you. Miss Duncan have an early dinner? Not of two. She hasn't come down yet. Oh, thank you. I suppose it's love. For I know if you give me the chance, I'll find romance. Now and forever with you. Nothing. You haven't touched your glass. I don't need it tonight. This is exhilaration enough. They're like shooting stars. I wonder how fast they go. Oh, it's easy enough to find out. From the ski hut to the trees is a quarter of a mile. I see that man up there. He's just started. Now, if he doesn't fall. He made it. 23 and 3 tenths of a second. That would make well, about... Why, why split seconds? Well, it's the fraction that makes the difference between winning and losing. It is in the split second that we really live. That makes for a short life. Well, it's the best way to measure time. Look at this watch. I love you. Those three words took exactly 9 tenths of a second. Yet there are years in them. Very remarkable watch. Where would you like to go? You mean there are other places? Hundreds, didn't you know? <laughs> no one ever told me. Then I'll tell you. There's a city called Paris, and it's a very beautiful city. And there's another city called Rome, and that's also a very beautiful city. And there are cities called London, Cairo, Athens, Budapest. And they're all beautiful cities. There's not one of them that wouldn't be graced by your being there. There was a man told me all that once. Who? <laughs> a clerk of Thomas Cook's. <laughs> I'm not the clerk of Thomas Cook's. My tour will be more encompassing. It's time to start. You mean you want to take me right now? Sure, did you think I was joking? Just as I am? I wouldn't change a thing. Well, you can't mean it. I never meant anything so much in my life. <laughs> well, this is insanity. I, I can't go like this. Why not? Well, I, I have so much to do with. You just can't revise your whole life in a split second. Of course you can. You shouldn't be frightened of the speed. When you're going real fast, you don't dare look back. What about my luggage? Luggage is for tourists. <laughs> well, if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. But I, I can't face an unknown future with an unpowdered nose. I'll wait for you here.
Christine. You shouldn't be here. What happened? Where is she? Mrs. Miller has left. When did it happen? An hour or two ago. Come on, I'll take you to your room. Miss Duncan, wait. Well, Karen. Tony. You're getting in rather late, aren't you? I just came back from town. I hope it was worth it. Tony, Celestine is dead. Karen, I'm truly sorry. How did it happen? Sudden hemorrhage. But how could it? You said she was cured. I never told her that. But you did. She said you did. I told Celestine the truth. Or most of the truth. I told her we'd done all we could for her here. When my time comes, how much of the truth will you tell me? But you're different. You're somebody else. Your time isn't going to come. Different in what way? You lied to me in the same way you lied to Celestine. You lied to me the first night about the iron door, and tonight I saw it. You debate orders you've never received. You seen. lied to me. Now, Karen, please, I'll take you to your room. You must rest. No. If you don't, you may be very ill. You mean I'm not ill now? Yes. Yes, you are. How ill am I? You have every chance. You've said that all along. I should continue to say it, but you must help yourself. I was Lineker up here. Lineker? Yes, why? All right, I'll tell you. I was afraid for you. And you still are. How much time have I got? A year, a month, three months? Now you have your whole life. But it's got to be a careful life. For a long time you've got to rest, you've got to sleep, you've got to become an automaton. Not acting on impulse, but always under control. You haven't got a free will anymore. You don't treat people like human beings. You treat them like machines. You try to keep them running, and when one of them stops, you go on to the next one. I'm tired of rest. I'm tired of sleep and moving slowly and lying in the sun. Don't you see what I am, what I want to be? Don't you realize I've never really lived? Neither did I until you came up here. What do you mean? I mean that I love you. I don't believe it. What will you believe? Nothing. Nothing anymore. I feel well now. I felt well for a long time. It's a deception. If it is, we're even. All right. I can't keep you. You know that. But your music belongs to the whole world. Now forget me, forget everything. But for that, you've got to get well. For that, you've got to stay here. Which treatment is this, Doc? Love didn't work. Now you try music. The music that brought me here now. No, that won't work either. Faith in your ability was the most you ever gave me. And now even that's been taken away. No, I won't stay here any longer. Good night, Doc. I'll take it to your room. No, no, thank you. I know my way. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. What did you have to do? Pin a note to the pillow? Yes. Yes, I had to pin a note to the pillow. Are you ready now? I'd like a drink first. What'd it be? I'm having brandy. I'd like the same. A brandy, please. May I have a cigarette?
where's Pete? He's gone. I sent him away. You seem terribly certain. Thanks, sir. Good night. Why don't you sleep? I'll wake you up when we get to Monte Carlo. I think I will. By the way, there's something you should know. My name is Karen Duncan. Not the Karen Duncan. <laughs> yes, the. Chopin could see me now. Good afternoon. My name is Margot, madame. Margot? Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. What time is it? Two o'clock. So late? Madame must have traveled far to be so tired. Yes. Yes, it was far. Not a very good day. Madame has a headache. Oh, hello, Paul. What? Oh, that. Uh, well, I thought it was breakfast. I hadn't noticed. I am. Now? In the rain? Something very important. More important than me? What? What time? About seven. You know how many hours there are until seven? Well, I'll try and make the waiting worthwhile. Oh, Karen, look. I have to go now. I'll see you at seven. All right, at seven. Margot, I've got a million things to do. Would you draw my bath for me, please? A very hot one. Yes, madame. This can kill a man. <laughs> but not you. What a wonderful way to die. And here's the finishing touch. No. What's the matter? No, not white orchids. Why not? Nothing. Nothing that really matters. I, I once had a bad dream about them. This is no place for bad dreams. Close your eyes. What do you see? Nothing. All the dreams gone? Mm -hmm. This will take their place.
doing now? You were straight. I can't. <laughs> you take over. You take over. <laughs> you missed that one too. <laughs> What number is this, Alaska? I don't know, 47, 62, who cares? <laughs> Everyone is a new and lovely surprise. Do you like surprises? Almost so. Close your eyes. Oh, no, not here. <laughs> well, maybe you'll like this one. Oh, Paul, it's beautiful. It's huge. It certainly is. <laughs> it looks like an ice cube. Shall I put it in my drink? No, no. I think this is the best place for it. Yes. Yes, that's the best place for it. <laughs> I can barely lift my arm. Don't worry, I'll be doing it for you. Le douze rouge périment. Que malheureux. Sempre rouge. Sempre rouge. What shall I do this time? Périment. What number? Anyone you want. I know, 23. Why 23? That was the day we met. This is fun. Rouge. Rien d'appui. J'en ai assez de la roulette. Allons au baccarat. Oui, par cinq rouges. Is your luck holding up for? Oh, very well. Miss Duncan, may I present Miss Dupre? How do you do? Where have you been for the past week? Visiting hundreds of places. How dare you lose your race? Don't you know I had money bet on you? Darling, you weren't there to give me strength. How do you happen to forget our date that night? I forgot I... Didn't know what I was doing, did I? I thought so. So did I. <laughs> I'm trapped. What can I say? Nothing, darling. Get back to your game. So nice to have met you, Miss Duncan. Thank you. <laughs> darling, you need some chips. I'll spread them around this time. <clears throat> Thank you. For what? For understanding. Oh. I mean it. Some women would be very jealous. Some women wouldn't. Yvonne's an old friend. Le vide, noir, père et manque. I'd like to go. All right. Where? I don't know. Let's just go. I want you to play. seem so far away. I want them to seem that way. So do I. I want every place except where we are to be unbelievably distant. I want the mountains to be on the moon and the sea to be on the sun. I want everything except this place, this moment, to vanish in the mist. Nothing else exists. Nothing. Mm -hmm. 
call. Who are you? What are you? I don't know. You appeared suddenly. For all I know, you may disappear again. No. I feel I've got to hold you. But if I don't, you'll vanish. Karen, love is the easiest or the hardest word to say. This time it's hard because my whole heart's behind it. You don't have to say Don't talk. Were you able to find me? I was able to find you because I wanted to find you. Took you quite a while. I can't come and go as I please. I can. Yes, I know. If you've come to give me medical advice, Dr. Stanton, you're wasting your time. I have no need of physicians now. I'm my own doctor. I make my own diagnosis. It's very simple. I'm feverish. 
I have morning temperatures and evening chills. I'm losing weight, but I don't care. Why must it be like this? Because I want it. I'm trying to smash the face of the clock, and I will. One of these days... What do you want? Do you want me to go back to the mountains? To be a patient filled with pity and false hopes for tomorrow? Lying there was like lying in a deep pit. Here I feel as though I was on the highest mountain top in the world, with nothing between the sun and me but air. Life down here is lived on the mountain top. But you wouldn't understand that. I won't go back. I haven't asked you to. You will if I give you the chance. When I left, I made a deal with myself. I made it even if I had to pay with days of time for every second of happiness. Are you happy? Happier than I've ever been before. I don't believe you. I didn't ask you to come here. I want you to leave me alone. Go away, please. I want a bottle of champagne. Yeah, madam. From Rissé, from Notre Chambre. Gordon Rude. Jen, how many glasses? One. One? One. Three. Yeah, madam. We've been looking for you everywhere, darling. Don't tell me you're drinking alone. It looks that way. Why? Because I want to drink alone. What a silly idea. I'm beginning to loathe back around from Anne Affair. Richard's in there losing my shirt. Il est ici, le monsieur. Dr. Stanton? Yes? Do you want to see me about Miss Duncan? You're a difficult man to reach. I prefer to be. What about Miss Duncan? Have you known her long? Why? You met her while you were racing up in the mountains, am I right? What if you are? Did she tell you what she was doing up there? I didn't ask her. That was her business. And I'm not so sure it's yours. But it is. I don't know what you're up to, and I'm sure I don't like it. I'm sorry. I think you'll like it even less after I've finished. Well, do you mind coming to the point, whatever it is? All right. As she hasn't seen fit to tell you what's the matter, I can see that it's up to me to do so. She's very ill. I don't believe you. She's the picture of health. It's one of the tricks of her illness. She's an undischarged patient from the Montvier Sanitarium. Well, how would you know? I was her doctor. At the sanitarium? Yes. She never said a word. Why didn't she tell me? I don't know. I can think of several reasons. While she was up there, she suffered a severe shock, and I think it was that more than anything else that drove her down here. She's trying to turn her back on the past. You've gone to a lot of trouble to tell me this. I'd like to get one thing clear. As far as Karen is concerned, am I talking to the doctor or the past? To the doctor. Why didn't you leave the choice up to her? I did tonight. You've seen her? You've asked her to go back to the mountains? Yes. Did she refuse to go? Yes. So you're my last court of appeal, Claremont. The choice is up to you. And a very small choice it is. Oh, I'm not asking you to force her back to Montvier. Take her to any mountains. Take her to the desert, Egypt, Arizona, anywhere where the climate will help her. If you don't, you'll kill her. Kill her? Up until this evening, she was committing suicide. But now that you know, if you don't stop her, in a way, you'll be committing murder. So? Now, if you'll excuse me, Doctor. Good night. Oh, the next one's on. 
on me. <laughs> oh, you're getting a cold. Fill a glass up again. The first thing I know for a cold. Let's not catch cold. Yeah. <laughs> Join us. Come along, Paul. We're having a contest to see who drops first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Karen has just dropped out of the race completely. We're leaving. Oh, I can't. Mm. I'm winning. I want to talk to you. All right, Paul. Is Richard losing again? Probably. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're sailing tomorrow anyway. Big party on the Atlantis, Paul. Oh, good. <laughs> Good night, Karen. Boy, I thought you wanted to talk to me. I thought I did too, but not tonight. Tomorrow will be better. I thought you hated exercise. Dancing with you is an exercise. Dance with me, Paul. I feel mental tonight. What's that got to do with it? Well, dancing with you isn't mental. Oh, come on. Why? Why did you drag me away? I've got something to show you. What's this? It's yours. What do you mean it's mine? Don't you like it? Oh, I forgot to tell you. The Atlantis is leaving early in the morning and we're going to be on it. No, Paul, I can't. I'm having your luggage sent up from the hotel tonight. We're going to Egypt. Egypt? I've taken a six months lease on a pyramid. And I've hired the Sphinx for a watchdog to keep an eye on you. Do you think I'll need a watchdog that large? I think the climate will be good for you, too. The climate? I saw Dr. Stanton. He told me to take you to Egypt. It's true, isn't it? Yes. Karen, last night when he told me I was bitter, I hated you. And then when I saw you in the bar throwing yourself away, I suddenly was full of pity. I feel differently now. I want to take care of you, to be with you always. Now I know I'm in love with you. That puts things in their true light. For both of us. Remember once I told you I was afraid you'd disappear? I don't want that to happen. Go to sleep now, darling. Tomorrow morning we'll be well out to sea. And when we're out of sight of land, we'll be out of sight of the past, too. I have some things I want to discuss with Richard. I'll look in on you later.
missed you at the casino, madame. Madame seems to be in distress. Perhaps uh, a little too much wine. Could I... Could I be of any help? A taxi. Please get me a taxi. Why, certainly, madame. I, I shall be very happy to help you find a taxi. I... Uh, I think there's one just around the corner. Perhaps Madame would like to rest for a little while first? No. I know just where you can rest for a little while. No, no, let me alone. you a long time. I have waited. Waited. I have waited. Don't. Don't. Don't touch me. Yes, you say I'm ill. I'm very ill. Help me. Oh, please. Please help me. I'll pay you. I'll pay you well. Very well, madame. Where do you wish to go? To Montverde. Sanitarium. Quickly. Some sleep yourself, Doc. I get it eventually. You run along. Connie. Better if you don't talk. I must. There's no need. Why did you let me hurt you? Anything that's happened is all over now. The world's right way up again. You're back where you belong. He wanted to take me to Egypt. But every mile of water would have meant that I... I couldn't have gone that far away from you. I hurt him, too. You never hurt anybody. Yourself a little bit, maybe. I couldn't lie to myself any longer. You never lied to yourself. Now I must be quiet, rest. You've got a great many things to do. I want to get on with them. The doctor will see you in a moment. Thank you. Mr. Claremont, what can I do for you? Karen's here, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she's here. I want to see her. I don't think you should. Why not? She's very ill. I don't believe you. You know her condition. She was in a bad way when she came here last night. I don't like your type of humor, Stanton. As a matter of fact, I don't like yours. The last time I saw Karen, she was in very good spirits. When was that? Last night. We were aboard a yacht. I left her in the stateroom, and when I came back to look in on her, she was gone. And now I want to see her. I want to find out what happened from her, not from you. You have every right in the world to see her. Very well, come along.
sorry. Well, that's all right. It's really bad. Yes, it's really bad. When she felt it coming on, she reached out for the only straw she could grasp. She would never have lived to see Egypt. And there's more to her than that, isn't there? There's more to it than just her coming back here for treatment. Yes. When I asked you if you were the doctor of the past, you said you were the doctor. I think it's time I said I was the past. Goodbye, doctor. Tell her I came to wish her luck. Tell her I had to leave without seeing her because I've gone down the subletter pyramid. She'll understand. I found this after she left. She won't need it anymore, will she? No, she won't need that anymore. Thanks.
then you'd better play for me again, and and I'll I'll check you more carefully this time. Now. Now. So the Anthony Stanton Chamber Music Society is about to go into action. Now that the professor has favoured us with a selection. You shall hear the report of the Society for the Prevention of Anthony Stanton ever making chamber music again.